Hi everybody, in this episode of Gaffer and Gear, we're gonna be looking at a Kupo wind-up stand. So that's a brand some of you have probably never heard of. They're not very well known in Australia. So I'll just uh, give a bit of a backstory. A couple of weeks ago, I did an episode on my wind-up stands, probably three, three episodes ago. And I was at um, Protog, which is the distributor of the, the Australian distributor of Kupo. And they said, look, why don't you do a, a quick video on our wind-up stand? So I uh, brought it in to have a look at. And what's the point of difference between the two? Well, the Kupo is about half the price. So sometimes a bit less than half the price, a bit more than half the price, depending on where you live. But it's about half the price. So that's a huge point of difference. So that's why I'm doing the video on it. All right, so having a look at uh, the Kupo compared to the Avenger, they're pretty much identical. The only real difference is the Kupo is a, is a little bit higher, marginally higher, and it's got some differences here in the head, which we'll go over in a second, but everything else is pretty much identical. I've gone over the, um, over the build of it. It's built just as good as the Avenger. Now, Kupo is another good example of a brand that I wasn't that impressed with about a decade ago when I first saw them, and now I'm impressed with them. So they've improved a lot. So back in 2008, when I was setting up my smaller lighting van, I did have a look at Kupo product. And back then, the, the wind-up stands, if you grabbed the legs and gave them a shimmy, the stand shook, and when you wound up the, the center columns, it really had a lot of play in it. So um, I looked at them and I wasn't, um, I wasn't too impressed with them. I, 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 would, I would be concerned about putting an M40 on top of them. Uh, but now they've, uh, they've really improved the build quality. Um, I can't find um, any evidence on this that it's not stainless steel. So I've looked in places uh, where you'd expect to see a little bit of rust if it's not stainless steel, like the cuts um, on the lazy leg, inside the lazy leg. Um, that, that's pretty much the only spaces you can actually see into the pipes because everything else is sealed. Um, yeah, quite well built um, and they've improved a heck of a lot. So if you looked at them a decade ago and you weren't that impressed, it's well worth having a look now, particularly with the money savings. Now, when I opened up the packaging for this and went through the instruction manual, I learned something about wind-up stands that I didn't know. And that is you can adjust the tension on the handle. So if you've got an older wind-up stand and the handle spins way too easily, you can adjust that. So you've got two little clutch plates here and you've got a uh, nut here that takes an Allen key. You just put an Allen key into that nut, adjust it, and you can adjust the tension on the handles. Now, as you can see here, it's exactly the same on the Manfrotto. So that's something I didn't know, and I'll be adjusting some of the tensions in my handles now. All right, so let's go over the points of difference between this and a Manfrotto. So the main point of difference is this little safety system in here. So it's got this uh, spring-loaded bullet or, or latch that goes into the holes of the column when you're winding up. So if you go to wind it down and that's, uh, that bullet's in a column hole, it won't release. So I'll just show you what I mean. So I'll just wind it up. Now if I go to wind it down, it jams the mechanism because that's in one of the holes, in one of the holes here. So if you forget to um, to lock it, it's it, it'll auto lock for you. Now if you want to release it to bring it down, you just click that into place and bring it down like that. Now that brings me to my only criticism I have of this whole entire stand. I've only got one criticism. And that is the screws that hold this on. Um, are very, very loose. So if you unscrew them, which you can do by finger, uh, you'll find they're covered in oil. So I'd suggest that when they drilled the holes in, they would have uh, put oil on the, um, uh, on the drill bit to make the thread, and um, they didn't clean it up. So I would, uh, if you buy one of these, I'd be taking those four screws out, cleaning them up, and then putting some Loctite in there, because uh, this whole mechanism does come loose because it's not tightly screwed down. Now, the last point of difference between the two stands is with the baby pin. On the Manfrotto, it's very, very small, whereas on the Kupo, it's, uh, it's a lot longer, so it'll fit more lights. Now, the next uh, a good thing about this baby pin is it'll drop out of the way. So I can put it across like that and free up the hole here, so that hole can now take a baby pin. So I could put something like a clamp in and lock that into place. Now, that might come in handy if you're, you're doing a job and you need to run, say, a T-bar, and you're running out of hardware, all you've got left is a uh, Cardellini clamp, uh, you, can, you can do something with it. Now the next thing is the spigot here, or the, the baby pin, will lock into place there. So you do have another mounting point. All right, so I think we've got to the stage now where we should take this outside and put a light on it and see what it can do. Now its maximum payload capacity is 30 kilograms. 
All right, so I've got a 4K on board, so that's a good test of it. And we're on a bit of a hill, so I've got the adjustable leg extended a little bit, so this is a good test of it. Uh, let's take it up and have a look. So it's nice to hear the clicking of the uh, locking mechanism or the safety mechanism. Now, first thing I'm noticing here is um, it does seem to have a little bit more play in it as it goes up. It wobbles a little bit more than the uh, Avenger Manfrotto. So I'm guessing that the tolerance, the gaps in between the pipes are maybe a fraction bigger. Nothing that worries me, just an observation. Okay, so I'm at top stick there. Okay, let's lock down. All right, so here comes the, the real test of whether I feel stable or not is when I step up on it to get to the next lock off. And that feels pretty stable. I feel pretty safe on it. I don't, I'm not worried at all. It doesn't feel like the uh, adjustable legs gonna slip. Um, I feel quite confident up here actually. All right, so now I've got it locked off. It's, it's not moving too much. The, the legs feel solid. Now I just thought I'd better show that once you've got the pipes locked off, there's no play in them. So if I give it a rattle, it's very secure. Okay, so let's take it down. Okay, so make sure I'm locked here. Step up close, keep my head under this lock off. Undo that, step down. Now, I don't feel at all uncomfortable going up and down the stand, so that's a good sign. Hand on the handle, undo the lock off, release the safety, and bring it down. Just having a look at it from different angles. All right, one last thing I'm gonna do is test the, uh, test the lazy leg or adjustable leg lock off because, um, look, I don't usually go to this much effort, but because this is so cheap, I'm having a hard time um, you know, believing it, uh, basically. So, you know, that's, if anything's gonna give way on you, it's gonna be the adjustable leg. So let's be really stupid here. So I'm gonna uh, hold on here. I'm gonna put all my body weight uh, off to one side, rattle on it. Um, yeah, that's holding. Okay, I'm impressed. Now, just to show you that I didn't jam it, okay? So, you know, there you go. So that's gonna hold. Yeah, okay. All right, so that's another review done. That's the Coupo stand. Um, so look, it's another brand that's worth considering. Uh, I didn't expect it to be all that good because of the price point, but I'm really impressed with it. Apart from these four screws here that could do with uh, some Loctite, I can't criticize it at all. I think it's a, a fantastic stand and very well constructed. See you on the next episode of Gaffer and Gear. Take care.